Hi, I'm talking with integrative psychotherapist Shalamit Lando today. Hi, Shalamit, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Joanne? Good, thank you. Shalamit, you work a lot with EMDR. What is EMDR? Yes, I do work a lot with it. Um, EMDR stands for Eye Movement, Desensitization, and Reprocessing, and it is a um, therapeutic approach to, and you in general has been used mainly for trauma because that's how it was developed, and it works incredibly for trauma. But, you know, there's big T trauma and small T trauma, you know, like war is big T trauma, and my husband left me in small T trauma, doesn't feel any less. And you can work for both things with EMDR. It's an amazing technique. So let's let's take uh, me, for example. Um, I was involved in an armed robbery. So obviously that was extremely traumatic. Um, I went for conventional um, counseling. Um, had I elected to come and have EMDR, would it have helped me? And what what would you have done with me in a session? Okay, would it have helped you? I imagine yes, because there's a very high... Um, um, percentage of people that can be helped with EMDR. Of course, nothing helps for everybody. If I wouldn't, if I see that EMDR is not working, I might trick it into something else, and that's where the integrative part comes. I would find another way to get to it. But EMDR, what would happen? Let's say, okay, I'm going to ex- try to explain to you what EMDR would look like. So, you would, st- I would start by asking you, what do you remember? Pick up an image that that represents for you the worst moment. You would tell me that image. You would describe it as a picture, as a still picture. I would then ask you, when you look at that picture, what do you believe about yourself that is a negative belief? So you would say something like, I'm helpless. That's exactly and then what I would ask you. Yeah. And I would ask you, uh, what, what do you feel when you look at that picture and think I'm helpless? And you would say, I will feel fear. Uh, what else would you feel? I'm uh, asking you. Mostly fear, yeah, just it would be fear um, um, and disbelief. And disbelief. So I would ask you, because I'm talking about the emotion now, yes, I did the visual. I'm asking about the, the belief that is installed in that moment. I'm helpless. And I'm asking you now about the fear. Where do you feel it in the body? So where do you feel it in the body? Um, probably like, uh, I don't know, like my whole body. It's just uh, all consuming. Okay. So whatever you would tell me in the body. And now we would start doing the actual EMDR, which would be stimulating both sides of the brain. So originally it was done with eye movement. That's why it stands for EMDR, stands for eye movement which is the first thing that happens. So I would have you, let's say, with my fingers, go back and forth, follow with, follow my fingers with your eyes as you think of that and see what happens. And every mind processes different. There's people who see the movie and the movie, movie changes or people who talk the story and that changes or people who just go into the feelings of they feel this and they feel that and that changes. Or you can stimulate... Because when you move the eyes like that, you're stimulating both sides of the brain. You can do it with the eyes. You can do it with touch. So I would tap you maybe on your knees or on your shoulders, whatever. I would tap you. Or I can do it with music. I would give you um, earphones so that you would hear a certain tune or whatever, or beeping going boop, 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 from side to side. And that does the process. And would you guide me, would you be guiding me through it? Would you be asking me questions? So let's say that I have you, let's, in the example of the eyes, I would be counting sort of 25, 30 times, depending on on what your reaction is to it. I'd see how you're reacting. I'd be reading your body, and I would do this, let's say, for 25 minutes. And you might be breathing deeply or crying or whatever happens to you. And then I would stop and I would ask you, What comes up now? And you would tell me what comes up. And then I would take that and I'd say, go with that, and we'll keep on doing that until things change. At the beginning, I asked you what the negative belief is. Your belief was, I'm helpless. 
I would also ask you before we do the the, the past, the, the eye movement, I would ask you what would you rather believe in that same picture? Because the, the pictures of what happened, what happened, happened. That doesn't change. So what would you rather believe instead of I'm helpless? And you might say that I can deal with this or there, uh, that I know what to do. So, okay, you might not believe that now, but as we start processing, you might say, well, you know, I actually have been going on and I was able to to go out out of that. And whatever your mind gives you. See, when there's distress in the body, all you can think of is the distress. Once you start releasing the distress, the mind brings you different information. You think clearer. You can then tap into your own inner resources and say, hey, you know, I've done incredible things in my in my life. So you can strengthen your resources by tapping into them and making them strong. Then the process, the actual um, stimulation of the brain, is going to re-strength and make stronger uh, the resources instead of the traumatic feelings. So the process of the EMDR is obviously going to um, release the stress um, and the and and the trauma and make it more bearable of the event that happened to me or whoever it is. But what about the the, the side effects that come with that actual event, that uh, build up of anxiety and fear, and that that will now occur in your day to day life? Um, it, you know, the EMDR is a release for that. Um, event, but can it also help you um, just cope better on a day-to-day basis with all the other things that um, have now spiraled out of control because of the actual traumatic event? Well, actually, what was found when this was proven in research with the Vietnam vets is that all the other things that come with trauma, which are nightmares and flashbacks and those rushes of anxiety and that, tend to start just leaving. Like when the brain processes this event, the event, the actual event, all the secondary things that happen, the symptoms disappear. Or at the beginning they start going down and then they just disappear. It's an amazing thing. It's not like it's magic. It's that something, see, when, when trauma happens, it's as if uh, a key in the piano gets stuck and every time you want to play over it, it's just stuck. This thing unstucks that note. And so everything that, all the chain of events that happen afterwards, they stop disappearing as you release the, the, the actual event. The trauma of the event. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.